Hey everybody, my name is Tom Tullis. This is the Tomb of 3D Printed Horrors. And today I'm gonna show you how to properly tension your belts on your Ender 3. Um, why do you wanna tension your belts? Well, if a belt isn't properly tensioned, it's gonna decrease your print quality. If it gets to the point it's so loose it can hop a pulley, you're gonna see layer shifting. And that's where you're printing one layer on top of the other. The belt hops the pulley so it doesn't move the print head where it should. And all of a sudden you're gonna notice a layer several millimeters over so it will have a staggered effect on your print that's really easy to diagnose you're going to notice the belt being that loose because it's going to have a nice droop in it but what's not so uh, easy to diagnose is when your belt just isn't quite properly tight enough and each printer is going to be a little different um, in my case i ran one of these uh, trash beasts off from our upcoming kickstarter uh, i didn't even look at it that closely when it came off the printer I primered it, got it under a magnifying glass, and noticed I was seeing a lot of very distinct layer lines. Now, if this was one of my other printers, I wouldn't think twice of it because that's basically the quality they can do. Coming off an Ender 3, however, that is bad quality. A properly tuned Ender 3 should have the layers virtually disappear. So I knew something was wrong. Now, when I first looked at this, this looked like inconsistent extrusion. Um, my Prusas suffer from this a lot, especially my Mark III. Uh, this would be about the best quality I could get off of that. Uh, the inconsistent layer extrusion is a known issue on GitHub. Uh, but from an Ender 3, that should not be looking like that. So I knew something was wrong. I uh, went through the extrusion system, couldn't find any issues there. Uh, the feeder gear for the extruder motor was nice and clean. Uh, it was properly tensioned. Everything was feeding good. So I knew that wasn't the problem. Started looking at my belts, they weren't loose, um, they didn't have so much slop that they were going to skip, but they weren't quite that super tight twang as when I built the printer. I really didn't think this was going to cause that problem, but I thought, well, let's go ahead and tune them up. So I go in, tighten the belts, and sure enough, here's the before, and here's the after, and that is a distinct difference. I mean, this is just amazing what the slightest little tensioning of that belt, the difference it will make in quality. So I'm gonna run you through real quick my trick for doing this on an Ender 3. Uh, your printer, if it's a different make, will be a little different on how to tension your uh, belts, but the key is you wanna get the belt to where it twangs like a guitar string. So let's get started. All right, to get started, you're gonna take the hex key that came with your printer, loosen the two bolts that hold the tensioner in place, once you've done that, you're going to want to take the largest hex key that came with your printer and slide it down between the tensioner and the x-axis extrusion rail. And then you're going to use this as a lever to apply some force on the uh, tensioner and keep it as far out as possible to keep that belt tight while you uh, tighten those bolts back up on the tensioner. Um, once this is done, you can repeat this for the y-axis if needed. In my case, it was just the x-axis. The y-axis was uh, plenty tight from the factory still and didn't have any issues, but the x-axis had loosened up a little bit. And as you can see here, the difference is night and day as far as uh, layer quality, just from adding that little extra attention to the x-belt. And as promised, here is another preview from our upcoming January miniatures Kickstarter. All of these miniatures print without slicer supports. Uh, that'll do it for this time. If you would, please click that subscribe button in your bottom right hand corner. Thank you.